In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can set up and configure WordPress multi-site on an existing WordPress installation. To do this, you will need access to your server via SFTP, FTP, or SSH, and you'll also need administrator access to the WordPress dashboard. So to get started, connect your server, and then you need to open up where WordPress is installed. I've already done that here, as you can see, and I've opened up the WP config file, which is where we need to make our first change. We need to use define, and we need to define wp allow multi-site. We need to set that to true. When you've done that, simply go back to your WordPress site and go into the dashboard. Then, on the tools menu, if you hover over, you will now see network setup. Click on this. You'll be taken to this screen, where it says that you want to create a network of WordPress websites. And to enable this, it's reasonably simple. All you need to do is copy the big block of code here, as you can see, and we need to go back into wp-config and just add that below where we said uh, to define wp-allow-multi-site as true, and then hit save. As you can also see, we've been requested to set up some configuration in HD Access. So once again, you can just simply copy this and go back to your website, locate the HD Access file, and paste all that information in there and when you're ready to go, save that. Go back to your WordPress install, and when that's configured, you'll need to log in again. So if we do that, we go to login, prompt into the password, as we expect, and there we go. So we're logged in, and one of the first changes you'll notice, even though it's kind of slight, is up in the top here, we have My Sites. So now we're in the WordPress dashboard again which is exactly what we want. So the first thing you might notice is up in the top bar in the WordPress admin bar, there's now an item called My Sites. And you can see that this brings a new couple of menu items. We've got Network Admin and just the menu item for the current WordPress sites in the network. So what we want to do is probably explore the Network Admin area because it's slightly different. Now, ideally you understand multi-site if you've come this far and you've chosen to go down a multi-site path. Uh, the real benefit is that any users uh, across all sites are the same with themes and plugins and updates as well. So whenever you have something to update, it's actually managed in one place. You don't need to update everything per site. So that's a very, very, very handy function to have. So we'll just quite quickly take a look at themes first. As you can see, we've got two themes currently enabled and 2012 is not enabled at the moment. So if we just jump over here and go to our dashboard, and we go down to appearance and then themes, and this is just for the very first site we've already got, you can see there's only two themes in there. So to give you an example of how this works, you just click network enable, and then go back into this where it says theme. If we refresh the page, we can now see that all three themes are enabled for us to use. Uh, and it's exactly the same for plugins as well. Everything needs to be network activated. Uh, if you wish to manage plugins on a site-by-site -site basis, then there are plugins that exist to actually change that behavior as well. So we'll just go back to the Network Administration dashboard. And now we're going to add a new site. So on the left-hand side, click on Sites, and it will just take you to show what you've currently got. And if we just look at how it is to edit that, you can see we've got the information regarding the site, where it lives, registered, etc. We can see the users, uh, the themes, but note that network enabled themes are not shown on that screen anyway, and some settings. Now most of these ones in here won't make a great deal of sense to you, but that's okay. You don't, you don't really need to know anything about these for the moment. So we'll just get back to adding that new site. So click on add new in the left hand side. I'm going to call mine site one, and I'm going to call the site title new WordPress network website. And just enter in the admin email address and click add site. So that's added the website to the dashboard, so we can start using it almost straight away. Uh, depending on your configuration with your web host, you will need to go into your dashboard with them, and you'll need to enter a CNAME record uh, just for the subdomain that we're going to use, so that when requests come into your server for this particular site, they're all set up and ready to go. And you can read more about that on wpkb.com. Uh, the multi-site article will be linked in the description below. So. Let's just go and test this website we've got now. If we go to My Sites, we can see that there are two in this particular dropdown. So let's click on the new, new website we've just put in. We can see the dashboard's working exactly as we expect. 
Uh, and if we just click up here, we can visit that site. And here you go. We've got the first post as expected with the standard new WordPress installation uh, and everything here will function exactly as you want. If we go to appearances and then themes, we've got all the same themes uh, and we can not update plugins from here, but you can go into the network dashboard directly by clicking the update icon at the top and you can update it in there. So that's really all there is to need to know when it comes to installing a WordPress network. It's not perfect for every use case, but if you want to run a network of sites, maybe you have a, a personal blog and you want to run various different parts or you know you want to write about different things, it can be a good idea to do that if you don't want to use categories. But other than that, it's entirely up to you how you use it, of course. So we're going to wrap it up now, but if you have any questions, please just ask in the comments below.